today. Intel confirms desktop meteor lake, Unity Engine's controversy update, the future of NVIDIA's gaming GPUs, and the RTX 4090 can't do what the RX 7000 series can. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, there were some rumors earlier this year that claimed Meteor Lake for desktop had been cancelled. Instead, the company was set to release it on mobile only and simply bring Arrow Lake to the desktop. And that made sense, given Intel has confirmed that a new Raptor Lake refresh is coming this year, and more of those are rumored to come next year. Plus, in their recent reveal, they only discussed a mobile chip. Well, in a new interview from PC World, they got a chance to speak with Intel's general manager of their client computer division and when asked about Meteor Lake coming to the desktop she said this desktop will come in 2024 so desktop so you are confirming Meteor Lake desktop yes okay great so um that was going to be my next question was whether or not you guys were sort of returning to an era where there was going to be a processor family for mobile and a separate processor family for desktop but it doesn't sound like that's the case that is not the case. Perfect. I want one processor family top to bottom so for both segments. <laughs> so there you have it. She officially confirmed that Desktop Meteor Lake is officially coming next year. This is great news because Meteor Lake is set to be a very interesting architecture with some big changes and hopefully some very big performance increases. But first, today's video is sponsored by Power Color and their awesome new Devil Skins, the most unique way to customize your GPU that I've ever seen. They're basically these awesome looking backplates that let you completely change the look of your GPU. And what's wild is that they actually use magnets that attach to your Red Devil 7900 series cards so you can swap them out in seconds. These are freaking awesome. So add some style to your new graphics card by visiting my link in the description below. And next up for today, I recently went over all the wild things going on over at the Unity Engine that essentially had developers up in arms, with the most recent news being that the company issued an apology and promised that an update was coming. Well, it looks like that update is here, and it's nearly as bad as I predicted, but there is at least one big change that's good. Ultimately, the fee for selling more games is still a thing, though there are some new options. For starters, they took out the fee from the personal subscription plan and upped the revenue cap to 200000 Also, if you make less than $1 million in 12 months, you won't be subjected to the fee. They then moved the start date for the fee to next year when the next LTS version ships. You can also opt out of the fee and simply do a 2.5% revenue share instead. The really big thing they did was remove the retroactive aspect of it. Now, as long as you don't update the version of Unity you're running, you don't have to update to the new terms of service. So that's at least a good thing, but they're still trying to charge you for success. Like I said before, it's like a drill company charging you every time you sell something you made with their drill. It's just a tool you pay for. They don't get to charge for what you made with the tool. You already paid for it. Anyway, I honestly think they've lost trust from developers and really no matter what they change, they can't undo that. Next up, I have a pretty big follow-up to my last video where I discussed a video from Digital Foundry. In it, a panel that included NVIDIA's VP of Applied Deep Learning Research, Brian Catanzaro, discussed the company's newly released DLSS 3.5. In my last video, I went over the fact that he essentially claimed that NVIDIA will begin discussing more and more on DLSS over traditional rasterization, going as far as to call native resolution fake. Well, it actually gets even more wild, as towards the end of the video, Mr. Catanzo was asked about the future of DLSS. He started out by discussing a demo that was shown off during the Neuro IPS conference in 2018. The demo he's referring to was an open world that was being completely rendered in real time by a neural network. As you can see in the demo, it's not exactly the best looking world, but according to NVIDIA's own VP, he believes that the industry is going to begin using more and more generative AI for the graphics in games, to the point where he actually says this. But I do think that, um, you know, let's say DLSS 10, you know, in the, in the far, far future uh, is going to be a completely neural rendering system. Uh, that interfaces with a game uh, uh, engine in, in different ways, and, and because of that, it's going to be more immersive and more beautiful. Basically, while he doesn't see things like game engines going away, he does seem to think that a game rendered completely by a neural network could be the future. Ultimately, getting rid of what we would call traditional rendering, as well as even ray tracing, altogether. And while he used DLSS 10 as an example, it's wild to think it could happen so fast. I mean, we're talking maybe a decade or 
or two, if that. Of course, Andy seems to have a very different vision for the future, so let me know who you think will end up being right. And speaking of NVIDIA versus AMD, it looks like NVIDIA's top RTX 4090 can't handle something that AMD's RX 7000 series can. For those who don't know, Samsung's next generation 57-inch Odyssey G9 is like having two massive 4K monitors right next to one another. Now, the price will likely make you cry, but if you were able to spend $1,600 on a GPU with the RTX 4090, you might be financially able. Unfortunately for you, the 4090 isn't able to max out the new monitor. While the monitor itself is still in pre-order, some reviewers have gotten a chance to test it out. And according to one South Korean reviewer, Quasar Zone, the RTX 4090 can't handle the monitor's full 240Hz refresh rate on either the HDMI or display ports, while AMD's RX 7000 series can handle it on both HDMI and display port. Now, we know it couldn't handle it with the 4090's display port 1.4, but it has the same HDMI 2.1 that the 7000 series has. With that said, the Redditor who originally posted some of this information seems to claim that it's coming to the 7000 series later, so maybe Nvidia can add it in a driver update, but I wouldn't get my hopes up too high. It was also mentioned in a German video showcasing the monitor as well. As for why this is the case, Tom's hardware does go over a potential reason that could mean Nvidia GPUs have a hardware limitation. Ultimately, there likely aren't too many games that can get anywhere near that even with the 4090. So it's not a huge issue, but for someone paying so much for a graphics card, it is a bit disappointing. So while that does it for today, what do you think about the 4090 not being able to do what the RX 7000 series can? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Power Color's new devil skins down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!